Hadith number 25 Aban narrates from Salaim and Abu Harun al-Abdi thinks that he had heard from Umar ibn Abi Salma. Muawiyah called Abu Darda and Abu Huraira. We were with Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali salam in Safin. He told both of them, Go to Ali and convey my greetings to him, and you both tell him, By God, I know that you are the most deserving of all of caliphate, and you have more right to caliphate than myself, because you are from those muhajirin who migrated in the beginning, and I am from Tulaka, those whom the Holy Prophet wasallam did not kill, and let them free out of mercy, and I do not have that status that you have of being first in accepting Islam, nor am I as near to the Holy Prophet wasallam as you are. I do not possess the knowledge of the Book of Allah and the traditions of His Prophet that you have. Muhajirin and Ansar paid their allegiance to you at a time when for three days they took advice about you. After that, they came to you and without any pressure, they very willingly paid their allegiance to you. The first ones to pay allegiance to you were Talha and Zubair. Then they withdrew their allegiance to you and oppressed you. They both wanted from you what they did not deserve. I am Usman's paternal cousin and want to avenge for his blood. And I have been informed that you deny having killed Usman and are keeping away from it and say that when he was killed you were sitting at home. No doubt when he was killed you said inna lillahi wa inna alayhi rajayun and said, O oh God, I am not happy with this, nor have I helped in this. On the day of Jamal, when they announced vengeance of killing of Usman, and those who were around the camel demonstrated, you said, Today the killers of Usman have gone to hell with their faces down. Have I killed him? Surely they too killed, and their companion Aisha killed him, and they all ordered his killing. I was sitting at home. I am Usman's paternal cousin, and Hamid's trustee, and want revenge for his killing. So if what you have said is how it is, then you hand over the killers of Usman to me. Give me the power over them so I can kill them in return for the killing of my paternal cousin. And I pay allegiance to you and hand over the Amr Khalifat to you. This is one matter. The second one is that my spies have informed me and I have letter from Usman's those friends who are fighting along with you and you think that they are united with you and are happy with you. Their thoughts are with me, their hearts are with me, and their bodies are with you. You show love for Abu Bakr and Umar and pray for mercy for them, but keep quiet about Usman and do not mention him. Do not pray for mercy for him, nor do you curse him. I have come to know about you, that when you are with your bad people alone and with your Shias, and your very misguided people who are liars and changeable, you show enmity towards Abu Bakr and Umar and curse them. You claim to be the Caliph of the Holy Prophet wasallam, in his Ummah and are his trustee for people. And Allah has made your obedience compulsory on all Mu'mineen. And he has ordered your reliant in his book and in his Prophet's tradition. Allah ordered Muhammad wasallam, that he conveys this to his Ummah and he revealed on his Prophet, O Apostle, deliver what has been revealed to you from your Lord and if you do it not, then you have not delivered his message and Allah will protect you from the people. Surah Maida 67 So he gathered his Ummah in Ghadir Khum and whatever came from Allah for you he conveyed it. He commanded those present to pass it on to those that were not present. And the Messenger of Allah told everyone that you had more authority over them than they themselves had. And you have the same status to the Messenger that Harun had with Musa salam. I have also come to know about you that you do not give sermon to people. But before getting down from pulpit you say by God I have more authority over people than they themselves have. And since the passing away of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have constantly been oppressed. 
if what I have come to know about you is true and correct, then the oppression of Abu Bakr and Umar over you is greater than the oppression of Usman, because I have come to know that you say that since the passing away of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and you were present, Umar went and paid allegiance to Abu Bakr. He neither asked you nor discussed with you. They too established authority over Ansar using your rights as an argument. If they had handed over to you and paid allegiance to you, then Usman, in comparison to people, would have rushed to pay his allegiance to you since he was a relative of yours, and you had a right over him because he was your brother through your paternal uncle and also your paternal aunt. Then Abu Bakr, when he was dying, intentionally handed it over to Umar. He did not ask you or consult you when he made him Umar Khalif and took allegiance for him. Then Umar included you in the six people of Shura, and all Muhajirin and Ansar were dismissed from Shura. On the third day, you appointed Ibn Auf as head for making a decision. When you saw that people were united and had swords lifted and taken an oath on Allah that if the sun sets without you choosing any one person, then they will kill you and act upon the wasiyat of Umar. On the third day you handed your task to Ibn Auf who paid his allegiance to Usman and you all also did the same. After that, Usman was surrounded and he asked for your help but you refused and he called you people and you rejected him when his allegiance was on your neck and on the group of Muhajirin and Ansar you were present there you gave an opportunity to Egyptians until they lulled him and your group helped them to kill him and you all deserted him so you are either a killer in the matter or the one who ordered killing and are the one who did not help then people paid allegiance to you and you are more deserving of it than myself. So give me power over Usman's killers, so that I can kill them and give the caliphate to you. And I and all the people of Sham who are with me will pay allegiance to you. When Ali salam read the letter of Muawiyah and Abu Darda and Abu Huraira had conveyed Muawiyah's message to him, Ali salam said to Abu Darda, You too have conveyed the message that Muawiyah asked you to. So now you both listen to me and then convey it to him like you conveyed his message to me and you both tell him. Usman ibn Affan can be definitely one of the two people. He either was the imam of guidance and to kill him was forbidden and help was compulsory. His disobedience was not permissible and to leave him helpless was not appropriate for the ummah. Or... He was the Imam of misguidance. His blood was halal and his help and reliant was not halal. So from these two he must be one. It is compulsory by command of Allah and it is a command in Islam for Muslims that when the Imam either dies or is killed, be he guided or misguided, oppressed or oppressor, his blood be permissible or forbidden, they, Muslims, should not do anything, i.e., not confer, not move their hands and feet, nor disclose anything, not take any action, until they elect for themselves an imam who is sinless. Alim, God-fearing and knows decisions and sunnah, and one who establishes unity and makes decisions within them, gives the rights of the oppressed from oppressor and protects them, from all angels, brings their wealth, establishes their argument, establishes Friday prayers, collects sadqa, and the Muslims get their decision from the current Imam concerning their Imam who was unjustly killed and bring their case against the killer to the current Imam so that he can make a just decision. If their Imam has been killed unjustly, then he, the current Imam, will give his decision from the trustee to be compensated for the blood. And if the killed Imam was an oppressor, then the current Imam will see what command should be given. This is the first thing that the Muslims should do. They select such an Imam who establishes unity among them. That is, if they have a right to select an Imam. And... They should listen and obey him and follow his footsteps. If the selection of an imam is in the hands of Allah and his prophet, then Allah 
has from the beginning done this and selected an imam and the Holy Prophet ﷺ has already chosen an imam and has commanded all Muslims to obey him and follow his footsteps. People have, after the killing of Usman, paid allegiance to me, and Ansar and Muhajireen, after consultation for three days, have paid their allegiance to me, and these are the very people who paid their allegiance to Abu Bakr, Umar and Usman, and had accepted their imama. People of Badr and those who were first ones, Muhajireen and Ansar, have acted upon it. The only difference is that before me they paid allegiance without consulting the general public and they paid allegiance to me after consulting the general public. If Allah Jal Ismuhu had given the selection of an imam to Ummah and these very people selected their imam whom they saw for themselves and if for them to see and select an imam was better for themselves than an imam selected by Allah and his prophet and the one whom they selected and paid allegiance to was allegiance of guidance and if that imam was such that it was compulsory for people to help him and obey him then these people had consultations concerning me and they selected me unanimously if Allah Azawajal is the one who selects and he has the right to select then he chose me for the Ummah and made me a caliph over them and commanded them to obey me and help me in the book that he has revealed and in his prophet's sunnah. So this is a strong argument for my authority and my right is compulsory. If Usman had been killed during the times of Abu Bakr and Umar, would Muawiyah fight against them or stand against them for compensation for blood? Abu Huraifa and Abu Darda replied no. Ali salam said, So I am also like that. If Muawiyah says yes, then you too say in such circumstances it is permissible for everyone who has been oppressed or whose relative has been killed, that he creates disunity among Muslims, separates the communities and calls them towards him. Although the children of Usman are more deserving than Muawiyah to seek the revenge for the killing of their father. He said that Abu Darda and Abu Huraira kept quiet and then said, You have, from your view, done justice. Ali salam said, By my life, Muawiyah will also do justice to me if he carries out what he says. Whatever he has said, he should remain on truth. The children of Usman are all men, Balikh, reach the age of puberty, and not children, or are not such that they have a guardian over them. So come, I will gather them and also the killers of their father. If they all are helpless and have no argument, then they all witness that Muawiyah is the guardian of them all and Wakil authorized and it would be appropriate to fight against all of them. They all and their defendants sit in a manner that they sit in front of an Imam and Hakim whose command they agree and accept his judgment as appropriate and I will hear their argument and the argument of the defendant if their father has been killed as an oppressor and his blood was lawful then his blood is worthless if he was oppressed and his blood was forbidden then I will take revenge from the killers of their father if they the children want they will kill to avenge if they like they will forgive or if they wish they will accept compensation. These are the killers of Usman in my army who agreed that they killed him. They are happy that I give a judgment this against them. Let the children of Usman come to me and also Muawiya if he is their guardian or wakil and they all present the case against the killer of Usman and seek judgment from me against them so that I can pass the judgment. They have in front of them the book of Allah and the tradition of the Holy Prophet If Muawiyah is merely talking which is baseless and false then he can do what he likes. Allah will help against him. Abu Darda and Abu Huraira said, By God, you have from your side done justice, more than justice, and have eliminated his untrue reasons and cut up his false argument. You have presented a strong and true argument in which there is nothing wrong. After that, Abu Darda and Abu Huraira stopped conversing with Ali. At that time, 20,000 men 
came fully armed and said, We are the killers of Usman and we agree and are happy about whatever judgment Ali salam passes against us. Let the trustee of Usman come to us and present us to Amir al-Mu'mineen concerning the killing of Usman. If it is compulsory for us to be killed or to pay compensation, then we will be patient with the judgment of Ali salam and will accept it. The boss said, you have done justice and it is not permissible for Ali salam to hand you all over and kill you until they do not present the case to Ali salam so that he can pass a judgment according to the book of Allah and the tradition of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Darda and Abu Huraira left and reached Muawiyah and reported to him what Ali salam had told them, what the killers of Usman had said and what Abu Numan ibn Zaman had said. Muawiyah asked both of them, What did Ali reply to you concerning his praying for mercy on Abu Bakr and Umar, but not praying for Usman and privately staying away from him? And also concerning his claim that the Holy Prophet ﷺ had made him a caliph, and since the passing away of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he constantly remained oppressed. The two replied, Yes, he prayed for Abu Bakr and Umar, and we were listening. Among other things, he also said to us, if Allah had given a choice of election to Ummah and they were to see for themselves and elect and if it was better for them to see and elect for themselves and it was according to understanding in comparison to the selection by Allah and his Prophet wasallam, then people elected me and paid allegiance to me. My allegiance is allegiance of guidance and I am an Imam and it is compulsory for Ummah to obey me and help me because they had consultation about me and elected me. If the selection by Allah and the Holy Prophet ﷺ was better for him, and according to understanding intelligence in comparison to people electing and seeing, then Allah and His Prophet ﷺ has selected me for the Ummah and has made me a caliph over it and has commanded the Ummah to help me and obey me. And this is in his book that he has revealed and on his Prophet's tongue whom he has sent as a messenger. This is the strength of my argument and makes my rights very compulsory. After that, he, peace be upon him, climbed up the pulpit in his army, gathered people, and those people who were living in the surrounding areas and Muhajirin and Ansar. He then thanked and praised Allah and then said, O groups of people, my merits are more than collectible and countable. From all collectible and countable merits, I am only mentioning those that Allah has mentioned in his book and those that the Holy Prophet ﷺ has said about me. Do you know that in many verses of his talking book, Allah has given more merits to the one who accepted Islam first than those who accepted it later? Surely from the Ummah nobody went towards Allah and his Prophet ﷺ before me. Everyone replied, bearing Allah's witness, yes. He said, bearing Allah's witness, I am telling you that the Holy Prophet ﷺ was asked concerning this. And the foremost are the foremost. These are drawn nigh to Allah. Surah Waqiyah 10, 11. The Holy Prophet ﷺ was asked about was sabikun foremost. The Holy Prophet ﷺ replied, Allah has revealed this verse concerning prophets and their successors, and I am more meritorious than all prophets of Allah, and my brother and my successor is more meritorious than all successors. At that time, 70 people of Badr stood up. Most of them were from Ansar and the remaining from Muhajirin, and Abu Haytham ibn Dayhan, Khalid ibn Zaid, and Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, and from Muhajirin were Amar ibn Yasser, and others, they all said, No doubt we bear witness that we heard the Holy Prophet ﷺ say that. He said, I am asking you bearing Allah as witness concerning what Allah has said. O you who believe, obey Allah and obey the Apostle and those in authority from among you. Surah Nisa 59 And his verse, Only Allah is your wali, protector and his Apostle and those who believe, those who keep up prayers and pay poor rate while they bow down surah maida 55 and then he said and have not taken anyone as an adherent besides allah and his apostle and the believers and allah is aware of what you do surah toba 16 
Everyone asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, is this particularly for some mu'mineen or is it general for all mu'mineen? So Allah Azawajal commanded His Prophet to inform people as to who were the people in the verses revealed and explained to them the meaning of wilayat in the same manner that the meaning prayer, fasting, zakat and hajj has been explained. So He appointed me on the day of Ghadir Khum and informed people, I have been sent with such a message from Allah that my chest is tightening and I thought people will attribute a lie towards me. He gave me an ultimatum that I pass the message or I will be punished. O oh, Ali, stand up. Then the call for prayer was recited and he prayed Zuhr with everyone and said, O oh, people, Allah is Mola, Master. I am Mola of Mumineen. I have more authority over them than they themselves have. Beware whose ever Mola I am. Ali is his Mola too. O oh Allah, keep him a friend who befriends Ali, and you keep him an enemy who bears enmity towards Ali, and help him who helps Ali, and desert him who deserts Ali. Salman Farsi stood up and asked, O oh Messenger of Allah, what is the meaning of his wilayat? He replied, His wilayat is the same as my wilayat. On whomever I have more authority than he himself, Ali also has more authority on the person than the person himself does. So Allah Tubarak wa ta'ala reveals, This day have I perfected your religion and completed my favor on you and chosen for you Islam as a religion. Surah Maida 3 Salman asked, O Messenger of Allah, did these verses get revealed particularly for Ali? He wasallam, replied, O Salman, you and all these who are present remain witness in this matter, and those that are present should convey it to those who are absent. Salman requested, O Messenger of Allah, please explain it to us. He wasallam, replied, Ali is my brother, my vizier, my successor, and my inheritor, and in my ummah is caliph, and after me he is the guardian of all mu'mineen, and from his children there are eleven imams. The first of them is my son Hassan, then Hussein, then nine from the children of Hussein, one after another. Quran is with them and they are with Quran. They will never separate from Quran until they reach me at the fountain. Twelve people from Badr stood up and said, We bear witness that we have heard what you said from the Holy Prophet wasallam, exactly like what you said. You have not added an alphabet nor have you taken it away. The Holy Prophet wasallam, had made us witness over this. The remaining ones of the seventy said, We have heard it but do not remember it completely and these twelve are our best and virtuous ones. So he, peace be upon him, said, You have said truth. Not everyone can remember. Some people can remember more than others. Four out of the twelve stood up. Abu Haytham ibn Tehan, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, Ammar ibn Yasir, and Khuzayma ibn Thabit, Zush Shahadatain. May Allah bless them all. They all said, We bear witness that we heard the Holy Prophet say that, and we remembered it. He said, when he was standing and Ali was standing next to him, then the Holy Prophet said, O oh people, Allah has commanded me that I appoint an Imam and a guardian for you who will be your Prophet's successor for you and will be my Caliph in my Ummah and my Ahlul Bayt after me. He will be that person whose obedience Allah has made compulsory for Mu'mineen in his book and you have been commanded in his book about his wilayat.